Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time! We are still in 1979, and today we're going to talk about Galaxian. Our story starts in Japan with Namco. First founded in 1955 as a producer of coin operated amusement rides named Nakamura Sei Sakusho, the company started releasing electromechanical arcade games under the name Namco in 1971. In 1974, Namco purchased the failing Atari Japan division, a division of Atari designed to distribute Atari's games in Japan for $500,000, over $2.6 million in 2020. And Namco became Atari's chief distributor in Japan. Namco wanted to manufacture Atari's games, but Atari only allowed them to distribute the already manufactured cabinets. However, due to clones of Breakout manufactured by none other than the Japanese Yakuza, Namco met with Atari in hopes of negotiating a new deal. The meeting ended with a misunderstanding that led to Namco manufacturing their own cabinets. Atari sued Namco over this and won, but Namco had already grown to be one of the largest video game companies in Asia. In 1977, the company officially renamed itself to Namco. Just one year later, Namco opened up their own American division, named Namco America, in order to help distribute their games in North America. In 1977, Namco released their first arcade game to break out of the Japanese market, Shootaway, created by Kazunori Sawano. Shootaway used light guns to shoot down clay targets on the projected screen. Kazunori Sawano had previously worked on many of Namco's electromechanical shooting gallery arcade games. With a proven track history, Namco president Masaya Nakamura tapped Sawano to create a new game in the wake of Space Invaders' massive success. Sawano was tasked with leading a team to make the next Space Invaders. Sawano decided to make a game inspired by the space battles in Star Wars. Sawano wanted a game that anyone could play, so the gameplay was streamlined and kept simple. He also wanted to make the game's difficulty slowly increase without a sudden spike anywhere. Sawano individualized the enemies to have their own personalities and tactics. Shigeichi Ishimura was tasked with the hardware components of the game. Ishimura was able to make the game run on a Zilog Z80 microprocessor, a first for Namco, which was capable of displaying the action in full color graphics. Ishimura also designed the sound using a synthesizer as Sawano found the other sound effects lacking. In total, Sawano spent half a year designing the game, which he named Galaxian. Galaxian is a fixed shooter where the player controls a starship named the Galaxip, fighting against aliens that come down from the top of the screen. The Galaxip can only fire one shot at a time, as the aliens shoot back and dive bomb toward the ship. Namco released Galaxian in Japan in November 1979. It sold well in Japan and was a hit with the critics. The critics in particular praised the graphics. They also saw this as an improvement on Space Invaders. Kazunori Sawano had completed his assignment and done it very well. With the background of the game now told, it's time to play Galaxian for ourselves. And here we are in the game. This is Galaxian. As you can see, there's a lot more going on. There's actually a background with stars and they're twinkling. I don't know about the colors, but they're there. And that is important. There's a lot of technical upgrades to Galaxian as opposed to Space Invaders. We even get a little bit of a, a mission statement, I guess you could say. Uh, we are the Galaxians. Mission, destroy aliens. Um, it's a little unclear whether they mean that we, the players, are the Galaxians, or the enemies are the Galaxians. Either way, we're trying to destroy each other, right? We're both aliens to each other. I'm personally of the belief that they probably meant that we're the Galaxians as the player, and we're trying to kill the aliens, which are the ones on the top of the screen. Uh, all right, let's get into the game. 
I'm not sure how much I'm going to be doing here. I'm not particularly good at shooters. Galaxian is probably the first one that really shows that off. Uh, so let's head in and uh, do what we can. We'll go for three credits. My goal is honestly to get through the main screen, the first screen here. That's honestly my goal. Uh, like I said, not particularly good. But we'll, we'll do what we can. As you can see, um, there's a lot more going on in this game as opposed to Space Invaders. And I'm going to do a lot of comparisons to Space Invaders uh, because, after all, that was the mission statement. That is the goal. It was only a matter of time after Space Invaders' massive success, just unbelievable success, that people basically just tried to do the exact same thing, but a little bit better. And that's what it feels like Galaxian was trying to be. I feel like as a, a result of its upgrades, it feels like a different game. It doesn't feel like Space Invaders. It feels like its own game. Uh, because everything is dive bombing at you. Notice that uh, it's almost constant, the dive bombing. Uh, they also don't come closer to me at like as a formation. As the, as the level goes on, um, they're not moving closer. It's just uh, the dive bomb, dive bombing that, that's doing um, them coming cl closer to me. That's giving me the uh, the sense of dread. Oh, can I make it out? Okay, so once you get to a certain point, yeah, I was kind of trapped there. Once you get to a certain point, they just kind of constantly dive bomb at you. So we're down to just one, and the music stopped, but I cleared a screen! Hooray! I did it! Um, as a result, you get the same exact screen, uh, similar to Space Invaders. Uh, technically, this is different- I just ran into that one, didn't I? Uh, technically, this is different than the first screen. The enemies here are slightly more difficult. They, they shoot a little bit more, um, they dive bomb a little bit more, uh, but ultimately, you're looking at the same screen. It, it's going to be this way for a while. From what I understand, it takes until about five screens before you really start noticing a difference um, in how in how the screens function. Um, but yeah, it, it's basically an upgraded version of Space Invaders. They even attempted to do similar music uh, with the heartbeats, um, the four-note heartbeat that was from Space Invaders, but um, it's not quite the same. They added more to the game. And ultimately, I feel like adding more to the game made the game... Wow. Just just went right into it. All right, well, there's one. Let's try again. I feel like all these additions to the game took away from the core gameplay that made Space Invaders so addictive. Uh, this game is fun, don't get me wrong. Uh, there, is, there is fun being had right now, but... Um, after playing Space Invaders, um, I, I feel like I'm missing a couple things, and one of those is the sense of dread, um, that I need to shoot more quickly, uh, because I need to kill the aliens before they get to me. And in this one, it doesn't feel that way. I can dodge. I can just dodge these guys forever. And therefore, I don't have the sense of dread and the sense of urgency that I did in Space Invaders. And graphically, yeah, it's a lot better. Uh, the weird thing for me is the Galaxip, uh, the ship that I'm controlling, at the bottom. Um, like, the, the bullet just kind of shows up at the top of my ship, which makes me question, like, the physics of shooting my, uh, laser bullet thing, whatever this is, my yellow thing, it makes me question, like, the physics of that in a way that, uh, I wasn't questioning Space Invaders. Um, there, there's one death. I'm not saying that I would never have questioned it in Space, Space Invaders where my bullets are coming from, but in here, it stands out on purpose so that you can see when your next shot is available, right? When you're... When your shot made it off the screen. You know, we're at the point now where it's just kind of constantly coming at me. And, yeah, it, the, the music, I think, is worse. <laughs> they added a lot more to it, so technically it is better, right? It's an improvement. Uh, but somehow, um, it doesn't give me the same sense. It, like, I don't like it as much, even though there's more to it. 
Um, so it, it's a complicated game. It, it's fun. Um, it's definitely an upgrade uh, in a lot of senses. Um, technically, uh, gameplay-wise, um, it, it's a little iffy for me. Technically, it, it's definitely better, but gameplay-wise, I don't know. Somehow it feels like I'm missing something, that I'm not getting the same sense. Like I said, I'm just easily dodging things to the side, and then, you know, just kind of trying to keep an eye out for when things are coming my way. Um, I did look up the, uh, the high score. Um, it is, once again, one of those scores that just seems utterly ridiculous. Um, I would probably fall asleep. I was trapped there. There was nowhere for me to go there. I'd probably fall asleep before I ever got that score. Last time, like, it takes hours and hours of playing this game to get the high score. And that's just not something that has ever really appealed to me. Um, th yeah, there's a lot of levels of this game. Yeah. All right. Last life, we got this. Uh, notice the flags on the bottom right. Um, those are to indicate what screen I'm on because they all look the same, right? Um, it would have been nice to have something in Space Invaders to let you know what screen you're on, but ultimately the, um, what do you call it? The, the, the score would have told you that. Here, um, the score is variable. You get more points for killing enemies while they're dive bombing at you, as opposed to hanging out up there. So, if you're looking for the high score, that's probably what you're going to want to do. Wait until they sh come at you before you shoot. Uh, because there's no time limit. In Space Invaders, there was a time limit. It was a variable one, depending on, you know, where the enemies were. Um, yeah, you have to wait for them to go back before they reset you. Uh, but depending on where the enemies were, how fast you killed the, the Space Invaders. Um, but there was a time limit. You had a limited amount of time before you were going to lose. So, for that to disappear, I think takes away some of the game's appeal. And that's that's kind of where I am with it. I'm, I'm trying. This is fun. But, you know, after, after what kind of felt like a surprise with uh, Space Invaders, I didn't anticipate having as much fun as I did in Space Invaders. Um, but after that, you know, this... It feels like, even though a technical upgrade, a bit of a step down. I think I have made my case for that. So let's try to finish my last life here on the second screen. I have gone once a, a full screen without dying, uh, but that was only on the first screen, not the second screen. So I am not anticipating getting to the third. Nope. Um, do I have one more? Oh, I did have one more life. Okay. Yeah, I've gone through once and uh, went through the first screen without dying, but, you know, shooters are not necessarily my my forte. Especially when, uh, it feels like there's more room between enemies in this one, that the enemies actually take up a, a smaller percentage of the screen than they did in Space Invaders. And hey! We're not playing ball and paddle games anymore. We have moved on to space shooters. More games inspired by Star Wars. It is a hugely influential movie. I think people will just went into that. We'll often forget how influential Star Wars was. But that is Galaxian. As you can see, it's it's kind of more of the same that we have seen before. Upgrades in some sense. For me personally, a downgrade in, in the gameplay. But that is Galaxian! Now that we have played Galaxian, let's talk about how it holds up in place today. Honestly, like I said, it feels like a bit of a downgrade from where Space Invaders was in terms of how much fun it is to play. Even though there's graphics, there's technically more sounds. I wouldn't necessarily say better sound, but there's more sounds. Um, it's a technically better game, but I had more fun playing Space Invaders. Um, and I think that there is potential in where Galaxian went um, in this kind of way of having the aliens kind of shoot at you. They move. They have different personalities. That's definitely something that has promise. 
Um, but I don't think that it was um, executed well enough in this game uh, to be better than what came before it. Um, of course, that's just my personal opinion. Um, Galaxian is often forgotten, though, uh, so it seems to be kind of uh, a general opinion as well that um, Galaxian is kind of the step between where Space Invaders started and where future games went, especially knowing kind of the history of Galaxian itself um, and what happens after Galaxian um, makes it more difficult to remember this game in particular. But it is an important stepping stone in the evolution of these fixed shooters, as they're called, where you are just kind of at the bottom, kind of moving side to side, trying to shoot at enemies at the top um, that, you know, basically got spawned by Space Invaders, and it's no surprise that they were trying to continue that, trying to do something very similar to that. Um, and if you were to see the game right up front, you would assume that it's a better game. Um, if you were to see it at an arcade, just be like, wow, this has color, the enemies uh, dive bomb at you, look how many times they're shooting at you. Um, but then, you know, once you actually get into it and play it, you probably won't necessarily think the same. Um, at least I didn't. Um, so ultimately, it's it's a game that I have a hard time recommending. I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a bad game by any means, um, but it's a game that I think is easily forgotten. Um, it's a game that I uh, did practice a bit, um, and I probably practiced too much because by the time that I did record, um, I was kind of already bored with it. I, I don't think that it, it came across that way, but I had fun. I did have fun, but I could tell this is probably the last time that I'm going to be playing Galaxian for a long time. Um, it's not necessarily something that I want to go back to, uh, especially knowing uh, what comes later. Um, in this genre, there are a lot of games uh, that improve upon um, what Galaxian was trying to do. So it's easy to forget Galaxian. And uh, that's ba basically where I, I think about it now is that the, the graphics, um, by today's standards, I think they're all right. They're not bad. Um, things look pretty good in the game. The sound, I would say... I would say it's a step down. There's just a lot of noise going on. Um, and it's hard to kind of single out anything in particular. I feel like there is background music that's going on. Uh, but once the dive bombing starts, once the shooting starts, once, um, uh, you know, once you get to the point where you're just constantly seeing the enemies dive bomb, um, everything just kind of gets lost and there's just noise. And that's not necessarily fun. Um, yeah, the replayability, I think, is pretty low. Uh, the gameplay, like I said, is a little bit of a step down from where it was before. And that's my modern take on Galaxian. At the time, Galaxian proved to be so successful that the game would be released in North America, where it also became a big success where it was distributed by Midway Games. It was originally released in North America in April 1980. By 1982, over 40,000 arcade units were sold in America. Like Space Invaders, Galaxian proved to be popular and influential. Namco would continue their rise in the video game world thanks to Galaxian. We will continue to talk about Namco and its video games as we continue on. As for Kazunori Sawano, we have not seen the last of him, and we will see more from him in the future. And that is going to do it for Galaxian. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video where we'll be playing another space shooter.